time I don't do anything, I slam it together and weld it. And I weld B313 X-ray every day. Severe or critical or whatever they call it. That last job was 1104, but it is 100%. Every weld I make is 100%. That's why I'm telling you, you don't have to do that garbage. Woo! Good morning, guys. <clears throat> so this morning, I'm going to give you a few tips right off the bat to keep you guys engaged and learning stuff. First, if you have dyslexia or ADHD, stick a big old pad of butter in your coffee in the morning. It's like, it's awesome. All right. <clears throat> it's all about meal scale this morning. And you're thinking, I'm a welder. Why do I need to worry about meal scale? Well, you're going to have to deal with it for the rest of your life. And I see so many people doing it wrong. You're absolutely doing it wrong. Probably, there's somebody, most people on this video is probably doing it wrong. The old timers probably not. But I'm fixing to cover it right now because I see videos. I was looking around at some other videos, and they're grinding the mill scale off. Big old wide passes grinding all that mill scale off just to make a T-joint or, or whatever, lap joint, whatever. If you grind that mill scale off all the way down this and then put something up there and weld it, the only thing you've effectively done is make it to where BBs are going to stick all over this and you scratched your plate up. That's it. This mill scale comes from the mill from the factory where it's made it's a small a thin coating they put over this and it does all right it's 9 16 at night and i gotta amend this video because the welding inspector showed up <laughs> mill scale is not a coating they put on it mill scale is a type of iron oxide that is formed on the surface of the steel during the hot rolling process I'm not going to get it all right, guys, but I'm pretty sure I learned that in school or I just misunderstood the teacher. <laughs> so keep on rolling the video. Thanks for watching. It's not weld good. I get it. All right. And that 6010 or the 7810 or any of those rods are a, that is a bad to the bone rod. It is going to blow that mill scale off there and weld just fine. Now, the first pass is not going to look good as the second pass. And if you're absolutely hung up on it, and you've got to get it off there because you think it's going to mess something up. Here's what you need to do. Say you're going to make a T-joint or whatever. And it's, the mill scale's heavy. Sometimes it is heavy. I mean, it just doesn't weld very good. Start up here on this shiny, clean metal and come down and put you a tack right there. Always start on the clean, heavy metal first. And then come down to your problem area or you'll just beat the crap out of the problem area it might have rust or something on it if you'll start up here and come down it'll give it time for the grease and trash to burn off of it and you'll be able to put a tack spin it around do the same thing same thing this side start tack all right now you got your t-joints tacked up there or whatever it may be take your grinder and go zip that's it just jam it down in there and zip it along there it will disturb it it will break it up enough to where you won't have any trouble welding it on the first time. And your second pass, is you're not even going to know it's there. And when you come around, you need to wrap these corners. If you ever make a position weld or, or a weld on a piece of structure and you don't wrap your corners, just think of me behind you popping you on the head with this file because you need to wrap all your corners. Don't ever do that. It looks stupid. It looks like you don't know what you're doing. Okay? So wrap the corners, make it look good. I mean, make it look sexy. Every weld you do ought to look the best you could do with what you had. I have welded stuff, welded stuff the other day. It had paint all over. I knew good and well it was going to have porosity all in it, and it did. But there wasn't anything I'd do about it. I couldn't get a grinder in there, and, you know, I didn't have time to put a 6010 first and then piddle with it and try We had to go. It had a little porosity. It didn't matter. It was holding motor down or something it, it makes no difference you're going to get into those things okay um <clears throat> that's what you get when somebody wants to do something immediately right now and they want it done today well, then you just got to do what they want it's got a speck of porosity and who cares now if it's pipe it's a different story that's why i mean this stuff is considered junk iron if it's not round it's usually considered junk iron structural i don't want to take anything away from you structure guys because i stayed there a while I stayed on structure for a long time, uh, and I, that's one of my biggest regrets that I didn't go go ahead and move to pipe. All right, um, so I'm going to give you an up-close look 
at the mill scale and about how thin it is. And then we're going to move on to you pipe guys because you pipe guys are grinding too much too. Let's do this. See those specks of rust? That's where, not that, those are arc burns. That's where the, the mill scale was damaged. All right. It got pecked like that. Now, everywhere that's pecked is going to rust. It's like I hit it with a chipping hammer. But it's super thin, guys. Look at that. I mean, it's gone now. That shiny metal under there. So, and if this was from China, it would, it would look like used motor oil all over it, and I'd be filthy right now. But this is good U.S.-made steel, and it's got a, a thin coat. That is not going to bother you. You can weld that all day with just about anything. My MIG gun with hard wire will blow that off there. We're, we are welders. We are not grinders. When you're grinding, you're taking metal out, and you're just going to scar up everything around it. And if it's thin and no problems, just weld the mill scale. Don't be grinding it. Nobody's going to pull your T-joint apart and see if you grinded it. <laughs> so listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Now, for you pipe guys, you pipe guys, uh, I've seen people that have been welding forever that are grinding their bevels that they just cut with a beveling machine. And I, can, I cannot wrap my head around that. That bevel was clean after you cut it. It'll have a little scale on it. I don't mess with it. Some people can, you can see a little flaky scale. Oh, it is metal, by the way. You can hit it with a wire wheel. That's what I do before I TIG weld it. I'll just hit it with a wire wheel. And then I'll take a burr bit on the inside and bzz, and that's it. But most people, or a lot of people, grind the whole bevel. And there wasn't anything wrong with it until you hit it with a grinder. <laughs> You don't have to do that. Just, here's what I do. Cut your pipe, put a face on it, take this file. It, it'll have a, a burr in it after you put the land on it. And most of the time, I don't do anything. I slam it together and weld it. And I weld B313 X-ray every day. Severe, or critical, or whatever they call it. That last job was 1104. But it is 100%. Every weld I make is 100%. That's why I'm telling you, you don't have to do that garbage. None of it. Okay, so that burr's in there. You can hit it with a file if you want to waste about 20 seconds doing that. But if it's got rust or dirt or grease or anything in that pipe, you need to hit it with a file. Just knock it out real quick. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, just break it up. Just disturb it. That flux will float that stuff away. The flux on these welding rods is bad to the bone. Take advantage of it. Okay, We're, we are welders. We're not grinders. I hope that helps somebody. Stop grinding mill scale. Uh, just be a welder, not a grinder. I hope y'all have an awesome, awesome day. Later.